Good morning. Um, I have to confess something. I'm not a diehard football fan, and I'm not a diehard fan of the Belgian Red Devils either. Of course, I was there. I was there in 1986 at the World Cup in Mexico when we made it into the semi-finals, when we beat Russia, when we beat Spain. I was a big fan then, and I think some people who have about my age would probably have been big fans too at that very moment. But I was not there when we played against Morocco in 2008, in 2008 in the Conning Baldwin Stadium. In fact, only 8,000 people were there, 8,000 of the 40,000 people that the Conning Baldwin Stadium can contain. And of those 8,000 people, 6,000 people were Moroccan. Moroccan people. So it was not a big success. And I was not there, but I was there in 2012 when we started all the qualification games for Brazil. And I was not alone, because the tickets sold out more quickly than for Tomorrowland. In fact, that's me in the middle. So we really succeeded. And uh, in fact, the story of getting Belgium behind the Red Devils again is not only the story of the Red Devils, it's also the rebirth of getting me behind the Red Devils again. But um, I don't want to talk to you about rebirth in a classical way, because in a classical way, rebirth is always about starting all over again. And in fact, it's often just the contrary. In fact, the secret of the rebirth of Belgian Red Devils is the secret of David Bowie. And of course, you know David Bowie. I think people who have about my age know him. Um, he's known, of course, for all the great music he produced. He's known for the influence which he had on fashion, on art, on design and on culture in general. But he is also known for the many characters which he produced, the many alter egos which he produced. You had Aladdin Sane, you had Siggy Stardust, you had Pierrot, the man who fell to earth, and many others. Now, he produced all those different characters, all those alter egos, but he always remained David Bowie. David Bowie always was David Bowie, and he always kept true to his essence. And that's the whole idea which I want to share with you. Rebirth is not about starting all over again. It's about reinvention without losing your essence. And that's what we did for the Belgian Red Devils. We reinvented all the time, yet we kept very much true to our essence. Now, what was the essence of the Belgian Red Devils? We defined it as together forward. Now, that's not rocket science, of course, but it was very important for us. Why the forward? Of course, because we want to win. Together, because in modern sports, you don't win any much, um, anymore on your own, even if you have great players, which we certainly have at the very moment. If you do win, you win because you have the support of the fans, you do it because you have the support of the technical staff, of the Belgian Federation, of the media, and even of the government. That's when you win, and that's when you become a team. So that was our essence. Now, if you have that essence, the question is, how are you going to reinvent it? And the first thing which we really reinvented was the mission. Our mission was not to qualify for Brazil, because that would have been a mistake. Because if we would have failed, then we, our mission would have been on its flat ass. And we redefined the mission as follows. We want to, b to build the best and the biggest fan legion ever. A fan legion which, which is there when there is a game, but also when there is no game. A fan legion which is there when we have good results, but also when the results are weak. A fan legion which can produce enthusiasm, positive enthusiasm, and can make it contagious, but also a fan legion which can uh, neutralize scepticism. And we know Belgians, they tend to be very, very sceptical. So changing the mission was really very important for us, and it uh, really was reinvention number one. The second, the second uh, reinvention which we did was, if you want to build the, big, the biggest and the best fan legion, the question is, how are you going to do that? And we, the way we did it was, re, our, was our other reinvention, because we didn't want to tell people how to feel. That's what this campaign did. It said, we have to be all part of the team. But it's not because you say to people that you have to be part of the team, that they become part of the team. And we wanted to do it a different way. We wanted to do it by creating contagious behavior, behavior which was very entertaining, which would make people feel united. And that's when we created the Devil's Challenges. The Devil's Challenges, actually, it's an activation campaign. It's a campaign which is meant to make people feel united, and it's a game between the fans and the players. And in fact, it is very simple. How does it work? There is the players that launch a challenge, 
a challenge towards the fans, a, a challenge which is entertaining, which is accessible for everyone, and which is rooted in popular football culture. And then the players respond if the fans have succeeded in the challenge. They respond by doing a counter-performance, which shows them as a team and which shows them as players. So we had different kinds of challenges. For example, for the game against the Netherlands, we had the challenge to color the country red. And for example, the, the city of Hill, yellow in English, changed its name to red. For the game against Wales, we asked people to produce 500,000 decibels of noise. And you had, for example, these elder people who produced the noise hitting tins and cans. And they made a magnificent movie about it, which you can see on the Facebook page. For example, for the game against Macedonia, we asked children to make children's drawings and fill the whole stadium with children's drawings, and they, they massively responded. And then, when you had the challenges, you also had the counter-performances. For example, this one, uh, where, the, where the players were playing against young children, different kinds of football, or where they, where they really uh, they went unexpectedly to uh, a home and surprised the fan, and they helped uh, in the kitchen, and they helped to do the dishes, and they also helped to prepare for school in a very spontaneous way. So you had the challenges, and you had the counter-performances, and together, the united people. This was our reinvention number two. But if you want to build again this big and this best fan legion, it's, you can only do that if you build it on an honest relationship, and that's where you have authenticity. In fact, the whole campaign is about authenticity. The players, they were not mere actors in the campaign, they were really the carriers in the campaign. And they were really very real, and they believed for 300% in the mission, and they believed for 300% in the campaign. And just to show how it worked, I'll show you Vincent Company at the beginning of the campaign with his statement. Si on compare les Diables Rouges aux autres équipes nationales, on peut réaliser qu'il y a quelque chose d'unique qui se crée. Ce n'est pas nécessairement sur le terrain, mais c'est surtout dans les tribunes. C'est la relation qu'il y a entre les supporters et les joueurs. Et c'est cette relation-là qu'il faut renforcer. L'une des plus grandes preuves que nous avons eues du support inconditionnel des supporters, c'est lors du match contre l'Autriche. On est parti en Autriche avec plus de 2500 supporters, idem en Allemagne, idem en Angleterre. Et je pense que le message là-dedans, c'est de dire que malgré que les résultats n'avaient pas été au rendez-vous, nous avons quand même été capables de retirer du positif grâce à l'apport que les supporters nous ont donné. Faisons en sorte que nous renforçons ces liens que nous avons créés jusqu'à présent. Vincent Company after at the start of the campaign. And when we had the fourth uh, Devils Challenge, in which we asked children to produce as many drawings as possible, for example, when he came about this drawing, he immediately put it on his Twitter and his Instagram account. So it was really all very authentic. That was reinvention number three. The fourth reinvention was that we fundamentally tried to change the way of campaigning. In the past, you always had like one campaign for all the games but they didn't want to do that anymore. In fact, we made one campaign per game. That means that we had a campaign for the game against the Netherlands, color Belgium red. We had, for example, the campaign for producing noise. And we also had a campaign, for example, in which we asked female fans to show that they could be as big supporters as the men were. And they really responded in a great manner. And for example, when we went to Scotland, when we went to Scotland, we asked the fans in Scotland to make us proud, and we had all this magnificent content which was produced. Doing this, uh, doing this, gave us the possibility to turn every game into an event, and not just the whole campaign. And if we won, we could build up towards the next game, and if we lost, we could again focus on the next game. So it gave us a lot of advantages. Reinvention number five is about the tone of the campaign. In the past, we had all those campaigns which were really deadly serious, you know, the tone which we find in the Nike campaign or which we find in the Adidas campaign with lines such as, the moment lasts a second and the legend lasts forever. And then you have this big picture of Ronaldo all over the place. But we didn't want to have that kind of a campaign. We wanted to have a campaign which was highly entertaining and we wanted to have a campaign which was truly Belgian. And we Belgians, we are a bit surrealist. On est quand même un peu le pays de Magritte, and that's why we looked for another kind of a tone. 
And for example, when we had produced all this 500,000 decibel, in fact, uh, for the second Devil Challenge, we all put it in a mega blaster, we put a mega blaster on a boat, we drove out uh, in the sea, we sailed out in the sea, and we blasted all this noise direction whales, just to show that the whole country was behind the Red Devils. Or for example, we asked uh, the grandmother of Courtois to knit a bonnet and the bonnet was auctioned and the money was given to charity. It gave us a lot of, lot of credentials, it created a lot of entertainment. The, the, other, uh, the other reinvention which we did is that instead of having a campaign uh, for everyone separate, namely a campaign for the Federation, a campaign for, uh, for the media partners, a campaign for the commercial partners, that meant now we had one campaign for everyone. So everyone contributed in the same campaign, which made us much, much more strong. The seventh reinvention was about the, sta the status of the campaign. In the past, we had a very, very static campaign with billboards all over the place. But now, we wanted a very, very agile campaign. And that's why the campaign ran on Facebook. Facebook really became the hard bone of the whole campaign. And you had all these fans. The fans, they were really producing the campaign. They were posting this magnificent content, content which, uh, which uh, got everybody very enthusiastic and very optimistic. And it gave us the possibility to change very quickly, too. I think some people will remember, remember this challenge in which we asked the fans in Scotland to make us proud. But what happened? What happened before? We had a friendly game against France, and there the Belgian fans were not behaving very sportive. They were whistling each time the French players got a ball. So that's when we changed, in fact, the, the next Devil Challenge. And we asked people, the fans, uh, the fans going to Scotland to make us really proud, and we asked all the other fans to support them, and they really did. The reinvention number eight was also a major, uh, major change. In fact, what we did is we stopped being a brand which also always asks things for people. In fact, we started to be a very, very generous brand. We wanted to give to people, and that's why we did this. In fact, we asked all the fans in the beginning of the campaign if we could have their profile pictures on Facebook, but we didn't tell them why. And what we did is we printed all the pictures on the new players' bus, and in fact, I'm very close to the wheel. And you had a beautiful story. In fact, those fans, they could be with the players forever, and they would support them forever. And the last reinvention is really a very important one, too. The fact that in the past, you had all these different parties, all these different stakeholders for the, Red, for the Belgian Red Devils, really not working in a synergetic way. And now we had the players, uh, the, the players, uh, Wilmot, uh, you had uh, the Federation, you had the commercial partners, you had uh, the media partners, you had the agencies, uh, our colleagues from Bonka Circus as well. They were all collaborate, collaborating as one big team and we're getting really the whole idea of the campaign. So, I've been talking now a lot about rebirth. I've been talking a lot about reinventions. I think I mentioned eight of them. And, in fact, it really worked for us. And the whole idea of rebirth is, of course, reinvention without losing your essence. And how it worked for us, I want to show it with the fifth challenge, which we did in which we asked uh, women supporters to show that they could be as great fans as men supporters, and they asked also them to fill one block in the whole stadium. Now, it's uh, a bilingual movie, but I think you will get the message. Beste supporters, voor de volgende duiveluitdaging willen we de grootste vrouwenspionkop in de geschiedenis van de Rode Duivels. Onze vrouwen zijn de beste supporters ter wereld, maar we zien ze te weinig. Dus reserveerden we een vak in het Koning Boudewijnstadion voor de grootste vrouwenspionkop van de Rode Duivels ooit. 
Bemachtig een plaats in het vak. Zing, scandeer, schreeuw of verkleed je als de beste en post je filmpje of foto op Facebook. En stuur zo de Rode Duivels naar de overwinning. Als tegenprestatie stellen de Rode Duivels zich volledig ter beschikking van hun vrouwelijke collega's. Félicitations, mesdames, pour la réussite de ce cinquième défi. Vandaag staan wij ter beschikking van de dames. Of een vrij chauffement, là. Une ou deux touches. Non, c'est défi. Non, vas-y, deux touches. Ah, dat kan niet snel, hè, dames. Dat is zo hoog. Ik ga niet voor niks in Brazil. Dus, euh... Oh, mais. Je ziet, garde zo kijk eens op voor de match. 3, 2, 1. Ik ben eruit en dan met één man in het midden. Maar wij zijn de trainers, hè. <laughs> Ah, mooi. Andere kant. Doe je bal. Het is niet goed, het is niet goed. Het is niet goed. Rest, 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 rest. Hop, draaien. Hey, draaien. Ja. Oh, dat is niet goed. Pas op het cocktail. Oh, 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 oh. Vas-y. Oh, nou, moi, là. Ça va aller? Ja. Heb je nog iemand handdoeken nodig? Ja. Ja. Je ziet dat je nog nooit, nooit gedaan hebt, Sam. Nee. Dat was het. fifth devil challenge and it, each time I see it again it moves me again. Um, I've been talking about rebirth, I've been talking about reinvention, I've been comparing the story of the Belgian Red Devils, the rebirth of the Belgian Red Devils to the story of David Bowie. And I just want to conclude with the, with the following. If rebirth is about reinventing without losing your essence, I would like to ask to you, have you asked yourself what is your essence and how are you going to reinvent yourself all the time without uh, becoming boring, because that's the whole idea. You have to capture people. Uh, voilà, je voudrais en fait vous remercier pour votre attention et je voudrais aussi remercier en fait tout le monde qui a collaboré pour cette campagne et pour cette mission parce qu'on va au Brésil, notamment, uh, premièrement, les joueurs, uh, l'entraîneur, la fédération belge, nos partenaires commerciaux, nos partenaires médias, les collègues de Bonco, les collègues de Bounogle, parce que tout le monde a vraiment participé. Et en fait, la nouvelle campagne va démarrer en fait la semaine prochaine et j'espère que vous allez aussi participer. Merci.